the CSS Jackson, or as it's also known, the Muskogee. The mighty CSS Jackson, an ironclad ship was she, meant for the glory of battle, but this was not to be. For her, no cannon roar, for her, no battle shock. That mighty ship, the Jackson, was caught moored at the dock. And that mighty ship, that good ship and true, was set adrift and burned by Yankees dressed in blue. She drifted as she burned, all in that muddy stream, till her sad journey ended, and she sank into a dream. Though she did not see the light of day for a hundred years or more, she has risen like the phoenix, that mythical bird of lore. So cast your eyes upon her, those who sought her to defame, for she has risen from her watery grave, and the Jackson is her name. A poem by Bobby O. Mitchum. In 1865, work was nearing completion at the Confederate Naval Yard in Columbus, Georgia, on an ironclad warship named the CSS Jackson. Featuring state-of-the-art technology for its time, the Jackson was a mere two weeks from being battle-ready in mid-April, but Union forces, led by General James Wilson, would change all that. And they burn the Navy Yard, and of course they get to the CSS Jackson, which incidentally has been loaded with stuff because one of the things that has happened at the Navy Yard in, in, uh, is that people loaded a bunch of stuff on the Jackson like they were going to try to take the Jackson away, loaded with all this stuff. And, um, well, that didn't work. And so <laughs> the Federal Army found all the, the Jacksons sitting here. They did a serious job of setting it on fire. I mean, they set fires in several locations on the ship and then turned it loose. And as I say, it burned for two weeks as it drifted down the river. And then finally, when it was about 30 miles south of town, finally had burned to the water line and the water came in, put out the fire, and it sank. The Jackson would remain submerged in the Chattahoochee River, just south of Columbus for nearly a century thereafter, largely forgotten by the community. As the Civil War centennial approached, however, Columbus developed a renewed interest in its lost ship, and by 1960, plans for a recovery effort were well underway. Well, the early 1960s were a very important part in my life. I was married in 1961, and uh, this developed in 1962 with the bringing of the Muskogee back to Columbus after it had been set adrift, set afire and set adrift. And uh, I was involved with Columbus JCs. In fact, uh, I was president of the Columbus JCs in 1962. And we had appointed a, a committee the Columbus JCs were a very, very active group in those days. We had a membership of over a hundred young men that were all active in the community. We at one time had 45 projects going on. And all of these projects were for community development. And of course, when this came up, uh, this became the main project. And it was a project that we could get everybody involved in. After they signed up, a lot were not real happy that they got involved because we ran into a weather situation, we ran into a situation of almost impossible to get to your objective. Uh, we had to drive in and old school buses pulled by bulldozers. And, uh, it was just a, a tremendous endeavor by a group of young men that that's what we were here for, uh, to, to better the community. And people were going down to see it and a lot of people went down and I went down several times a week to see it. We had a uh, dive club up at Auburn University and Coach Washington, someone contacted him, I'm not sure who, and asked us to bring a group down to survey this wreck when it was first found. So we got together and drove down here one Sunday morning because that's when the river is normally lower. And uh, we harnessed up and went out there and dove on the wreck. And what was exposed because, you know, most of the wreck was uh, buried up under the bank. And we saw what was out there and uh, visibility was kind of lousy and the water was very cold. 
but we went out there and we pulled up some of the armor plate and a few other things. And if you look on the upstream side of the wreck, you'll see a bunch of rock pile there. It's where the um, where the Corps of Engineers pile stones up there to make what they call a going to concentrate the flow of the river and keep a deep channel. But uh, we we found that we found some of the nuts and bolts and armor plate and in the movies you can see us pull up some of that stuff. I don't think I really uh, uh, realized the significance of it at the time because we thought it was just a small old river but we didn't realize how huge it is. Well back then it had been raining and down there at Fort Benning you know it's very muddy and we couldn't get too close to the site so we uh, picked up all our gear and struggled down there to the site put on our suits and went out there into the water. But it was, uh, you know, that, that mud and all leaves a lot to be desired as far as walking up and down the riverbanks. Well, probably no preconceived notions because we just said that there was, that they think they'd found the old ironclad and they wanted us to check it out. Well, I had no idea what we'd, uh, what we'd find and I didn't know too much about the Jackson at that time. So, I just knew it was an old riverboat hull and uh, you know we went to see it. Well it's amazing you find these sites and you know you read about them in the history books but a lot of times you go down there and you can actually see the things and touch them that uh, that uh, you know where, where that uh, actually were part of history and it's really hands-on history there. Well these are uh, spikes and they are probably from that period because they certainly look like it. I've seen enough of these not only at the Naval Museum but in pictures that I have uh, at home of many, many uh, Civil War artifacts and of ancient ships from the Civil War. And these quite fit the bill. These look identical to the ones that we saw falling all off of the Jackson that day. Uh, I happen to dig for bottles. That's one of my hobbies. I love digging up old bottles and I love history in general. Uh, about a year ago, roughly a year ago, I dug these out of the Chattahoochee right where the Jackson was launched, its original launch site. Uh, there's also uh, large pieces of, of heavy coal that is under the water right there. It's still shallow enough that you can get out there when the water is low and dig things up. These were recovered roughly about a year ago in that area. And these are a short spike and one of the longer spikes this is very typical of the ones that we saw. Now, I had some of the original ones, but they've all disintegrated uh, through the years. But this is, like I said, about a year ago, and this is roughly, could very well have been out of the Jackson because it is at that launch site.